Hi everyone! So at the end of my videos I usually end with some kind of line of if there are any patterns that you want to see me make or struggle through or whatever then go ahead and leave me a comment below. So I thought it might be helpful if I do a really quick video flipping through all of my patterns so that you see what I have so that if something, if you have something or a project that you want to work on or if something catches your eye and you want me to sew through it then you can go ahead and refer back to this and let me know if you want to see me make anything. All right, so let's get into it. All right, let me preface this by saying that I am on my fourth white claw of the night, so if I accidentally mess up um, some numbers, uh, I apologize. All right, let's first focus on some new additions that I have not yet categorized yet. Uh, I just haven't gotten around to it. So whenever I get a new pattern, I like to photograph the front and the back of the envelope and upload them to a Google Drive so that if I'm ever out and about at a fabric shop or wherever and I see a fabric and I immediately think, oh, that would be so perfect for that one particular dress, oh, I wish I knew how much yardage it had, I can just pull out my phone, go to Google Drive, um, search through all of them, look through all of them, find the pattern, and then find the yardage, and then I'm good to go. All right, so this first one is a vintage McCall's pattern, uh, 4118, size 16, a little bit small for me, but I like this kind of shirt dress thing, which is why I picked it up. Based on the wide shoulder pads and knee length skirt, I would put this somewhere at mid 40s. This is a Simplicity, what is that, 6243, uh, half size Slenderette. I would put this, or late 60s, 1968 says right here. Um, I wasn't originally going to buy this pattern when I saw it at an antique market, but I noticed the handwriting was very similar to the handwriting from the previous lot of vintage patterns that I bought from the same antique market. So this likely, likely came from the same lady, so I picked her up so she would be with the rest of her sisters. I also picked up this pattern, uh, McCall's 7554, which is a Mrs. Robe in a size 18 to 20, so it can be worn either kind of like as a house dress or cinched in at the waist. Um, I would, again, put this at probably mid to early, early to mid 60s. Yeah, so I have this. This is a very modern pattern. I had a plan to make a hammerhead shark inspired dress, which is why I wanted this off the shoulder kind of thing. And I wasn't at the time going to have enough time to self draft that properly. That ended up not happening. So either way, I have this dress now. Uh, this is McCall's M7719. It has a lot of options. So yeah, if this is one you were interested in, let me know. These two are advanced patterns that I purchased from Angela Clayton over on Etsy. So we have this blouse over here and we have this, I think, jumper with like a bolero over here. Um, I have fabric for these. I would like to work on these. I have plans for these. I just haven't had the time to actually sit down and properly work on them. Next, I have this pattern, uh, which may look familiar to some of you if you've watched some of my other videos. So the original number is Simplicity 4237, but this got reprinted very recently. But I was at a different antique mall and I happened to be wearing the shirt that I made with the reprint of this pattern while I found this pattern. So I felt it was fate and I had to pick it up. So I picked it up. This is, this should be filed away somewhere because I've had this for a while. Um, I've used so many different versions of this dress, but I also had, again, plans to make a dress for an event that I went to that didn't quite work out. Anyway, this is Simplicity 8330, um, just a kind of a halter neck dress with either a long shirt or m short or mermaid skirt. All right, so this bin right here is all modern reprints of vintage patterns. Um, so for the most part, they go from newer to older as they get further back. Some of them don't have exact years and I had to kind of make educated guesses. So here is a 1960s dress, uh, Simplicity 8591. Here's what that looks like. Then we have McCall's M7086, which is another very classic 1960s silhouette, followed by Simplicity 8445, which is this. Um, so this was a, a little mini existential crisis I had in the middle of an antique store, but I do have a tutorial about this up on my channel. I'll try to link that right here for you. Next we have M7184, which I also have a tutorial for that I will link up here. This is a ladies jumper and blouse. I have made the jumper once before and I've made the blouse twice since then. Next we have Simplicity 8458, which I also again have a tutorial for that I will link up here. This is just a nice little skirt. Uh, this one comes with um, the original instructions. They don't have modern instructions. So um, if you get a little confused, go see my video. 
And we have McCall's 70, M7748, a uh, like late 50s kind of dress. Um, then we have Simplicity 1459. I have made the sleeveless version of this. Up next is Simplicity 8250, which I also have made, and I think I made a video about that. Yeah, I did. It's the swan skirt, so that will be linked up here. Then we have Simplicity 1155. Made this for a um, costume for a show. Not for me. It was for a friend of mine. Fit horribly, so I would kind of like to come back and uh, redeem myself, but I had to cut the pattern much smaller than it is, so we'll, we'll see about that. Then we have, this is a Vogue, what's the number? V1084. I also made a video about this that I will link above. Um, don't recommend this one. That's the short answer of that. Then we have Simplicity 8747, and I think this is the one I was mocking up in this video that I will link up above as well. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm, I'm pretty sure this is the one I was mocking up in there. Um, then we also have Vintage Vogue V9280. It is a long coat. Simplicity uh, 8876. Uh, this reminds me of kind of like an Audrey Hepburn kind of look. But this would be like a very late 40s, early 50s kind of look. Then we have Simplicity 1777, 1940s retro. Not made that one yet. Simplicity 8654. I have made a video about the shorts of this, which I will link again right here for you all. Um, it was a time. Simplicity 8736. Um, a series of blouses. These all seem to button up the back, which is why I have not made this one yet because you need help to get into it. Not sure I'm about that life. Simplicity 8242. A nice little suit. Simplicity 8447 overalls and a shirt, blouse. Uh, Simplicity 0666. Um, I believe this is meant to be kind of an Agent Carter release uh, with the, the red hat over here. This is a blouse with a potentially con... not a blouse. This is a dress with a potentially contrasting collar. Um, this is an early 40s M McCall's M7433. Um, Another little dress with a pleated skirt. Simplicity 8462. This is a bolero and a line skirt set. Uh, Simplicity 8461. This is a suit set. Maybe this is the one I was, I was talking about in this video. I genuinely don't remember. I'm sure future editing Sam will write something on the, uh, the screen right now. Then we have, my boyfriend actually picked this one out, sorry, fiance. Um, this is Simplicity 8646. This is a dress with almost a Peter Pan collar, not quite. Um, I do like the little pockets there. Anyway, Simplicity 8510, a 1930s bra and tap pant set. Um, so that is those. All right, what is in this bin? I went through everything and labeled it recently modern slash vintage inspired so these are not anything vintage looking in here is not a reprint of a vintage pattern it is vintage inspired or modern um this was in a like three dollar bin at a joann's this is simplicity s8918 so we have a bunch of peasant kind of inspired blouses here then we have Butterick B5983. This one might be a vintage reprint because it's an anniversary, but not sure. This is kind of a sheath dress or an A-line dress. Simplicity 8691. Um, I, think, I think my fiance picked this one out too. There was a really good sale. And we have Butterick B6323. This is a Gertie pattern, uh, one shoulder dress. B6 four, five, three. I promise I can read. This is another Gertie dress, um, kind of a spaghetti strap cami style, either wiggle or um, circle skirt, no, not a circle, rectangle skirt dress. Simplicity 8051, another kind of retro pinup rockabilly inspired dress. McCall's M6838. I used this before. I used the skirt section to draft a Morticia Adams costume my senior year of college. Simplicity 8637. I believe I originally got this to use the top half for a romper way back in the day, but I have this pattern. McCall's M7513. Um, I feel like I've made a mock-up of this one at some point in time. I'm not sure. 
Uh, anyway, Simplicity 8297. I Again, I believe I made a uh, either a video or a tutorial that I will link right up here. I'm pretty sure I've I've made a video on this one. Then we have New Look S0870 for some shorts, pants, and a skirt. Um, again, it's so easy by Simplicity uh, 1142. This is a romper, um, pantsuit, not a pantsuit, uh, jumpsuit set. And we have Butterick um, 5561. This was a random pattern grab, and I did make a video again about that that I will link up above. All right, next bin we have costume slash historical, so costumey or historical pieces. Um, so we have Simplicity 8162. These are stays and a bum roll and a shift. This is, I believe, American Duchess. Yes. Then we have Simplicity 8161, which I believe is also the American Duchess outerwear that's meant to go with the stays, if I remember correctly. Um, then we have Simplicity 8546, which is a robe a la Francaise, again by American Duchess. And we have Simplicity 8579, which is the stays and the panniers to go underneath and the shift to go underneath the um, robe a la Francaise for also by American Duchess. Um, I have almost all of Angela Clayton's stuff because I'm a little bit obsessed. I want to be friends with her so bad. Anyway, um, then we have McCall's. This is M7915. This is kind of like an Edwardian kind of era uh, long line corset and shift. I keep saying shift. Some of these eventually at some point turn into chemises and etc. Anyway, then we have McCall's M7941, also by Angela Clayton, which is the Edwardian outerwear that goes with the previous stuff. Then we also have another Angela Clayton pattern, M7885, which is this beautiful, huge, princessy, fantasy inspired gown. Oh, look, it's Angie again. Uh, McCall's M7732, um, a walking skirt. Um, really pretty. Oh, look at that. Yeah, I'm sure you didn't see that coming. Uh, McCall's M7763, another Angela Clayton pattern for this. Um, it's like an Italian Renaissance era gown, like late Renaissance-ish is when they had the poofy sleeves. Anyway, that's that. Oh, again, Angie. Uh, um, McCall's M7826. Um... I feel like this is a 16s, 16 something era, somewhere kind of towards the middle. I forget exactly where, but I have this one. Next, we have Simplicity 1139. This is a fashion historian pattern for a corset, a chemise, and I think the drawers are in here too. Then we have Butterick B5662. This is a corset pattern. Butterick B4254. Um, I do have a video about making, I think it was this one that I made, which I will link above. I had absolutely no, what I would, no idea what I was doing then, and I still have no idea what I'm doing. Simplicity, 2851, Saloon Girl, please don't make me talk about this. Um, McCall's M6770, um, I have no plans for this, I just picked it up for options for a previous project like six years ago. All right, so now we're getting into some of my true vintage patterns. We have the 1940s, 50s, 60s, and 90s. There is a reason for that big jump. You will see later. Um, so we start out with, this is my oldest one. This is Vogue, a 9261. I'm having, uh, this is very, very early 40s, if not late 30s. Um, they reprinted this a couple of times, and you can tell the time by the hairstyle. Um, this is a coat that can be either single or double-breasted. Then we have Simplicity 4858. This is an apron, and this was actually tucked in with some of my other, uh, one other vintage pattern. It was like a bonus pattern that just surprised me. Um, so some of these vintage patterns might have some other ones kind of hidden in there that I will eventually find as I go through all of them. So this is an apron pattern. Next we have a Simplicity 2040. I'm not entirely sure why I picked this one up as it is not in my size in any way, shape or form, but it is a very beautiful um, skirt or, or dress. And I like this kind of detail right here. Then we have Butterick 4309. Yeah, 60s. Um, again, not 100% sure why I have this one. Uh, oh, this one came in a, the lot with the other ones. Um, this is a very, very mod, very 60s, shorter, straight dress. Then we have another Simplicity um, 3346. Uh, this is a mid to late 60s, and this one has 
or this one was early 60s. This was made in a gray slush, slush, slushy. I can read cursive when I'm sober. Uh, 1960. Um, Soutage, maybe. Anyway, so this one has little notes all over it from its previous owner, uh, which I do really appreciate and I really love. So I have this. Next, we have Vogue 5227, which was made in May 1961. Uh, I don't see what fabric it was made at the time. Uh, this one says, not very good fit. So this will be fun to eventually make through and see, but this is a uh, little cocktail dress. Next, we have McCall's 6468, uh, which I did make very recently. Uh, there was a date on this somewhere. Yes, June 1963, brown check gingham dress. Um, I did not make a video on this, but I did post a lot about it on my Instagram over at Thread and Needlefish. Um, and I do have a little highlights reel on my Instagram page about making this dress. It's called Vintage Blue. Um, so if you're interested in seeing a little bit of the making of process, then go ahead and check out my Instagram and check out those stories. Next, we have this other very quintessential 60s, uh, yes, May 1964 pattern. Um, this is Simplicity 5057. Next, we have Simplicity 5529. I forget what this is. This may be another apron. Not 100% sure. This was another one of those bonus patterns that was kind of tucked into another pattern. Then we have Very Easy Vogue um, 8712. This is a jumper that can also be kind of this blouse, uh, pants, and other main blouse. Does this? Oh, this doesn't have the actual blouse pattern. This would be great to have an actual blouse pattern. I have... What's that other blouse pattern that I have that I just used? Anyway, I do have another pattern from this era that's very similar to this, but we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out later. And I have one more 1963 pattern that I have out because I have plans to make this jacket relatively soon. Um, this is So Easy Advance 3077. I recently made the shirt from this, or the blouse. So this one was up on my to-do list and not in with all of the other ones, which is why I kind of, I, I was looking for this one, but I found it. All right, next we have McCall's 9579. This is just a classic fit three-hour shirt uh, button down. I have made so many so many of these and this was a pattern sent to me by my mom and I have a video which I will link above all about the making of of this pattern. Next we also have Simplicity. What number is this? Uh, 9811. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of pieces in here. Uh, yeah this was this was definitely 90s so I'm not really super obsessed with that. We also have New Look 6042. Again a bunch of 90s patterns. Those were given to me. Um, next we also have Vogue, what is the number here? V2827, which is, this one's a little bit more modern, this one's mid-2000s, um, a jacket, pant, and skirt set, an asymmetrical skirt set. Um, again, these were given to me, did not pick these out, but I am very grateful that they were given. All right, next era. All right, next, this one is all 1970s. So we have... A very easy Vogue in 9692, uh, which is this dress that can also be worn as a jumper. Yeah, 5 4 dress, 5 for jumper. Then we have Vogue 8631, uh, October, November 1973 mag. Um, so this has the little jacket, it has the skirt, and I believe it has the blouse as well. Yes. Uh, this one is suitable for knits. Um, starting in the 70s, you do, I do see a lot of, this is for knits, written on the back. Uh, next we have another very easy Vogue, 8377. Uh, use cable stitch knit. Okay, I was hoping for a date. Uh, this is another 1970s. This is the dress. This almost looks like palazzo pants, but I'm assuming this is just a very long dress. Um, we also have another Vogue for knits, 8642. This is a, um like a cardigan and a dress and is the pants in here? I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, Mrs. Cardigan, top, skirt, and pants. There's a lot in here. We also have Vogue, very easy Vogue 9147, which is a, it looks like a blouse, pants, and a cardigan jacket kind of thing. Uh, we have another very easy Vogue. I 
pattern number is ripped. So it looks like eight, five, maybe either a three or a nine and a one or something. Um, I don't know. Either way, we have um, this kind of like short sleeve dress, long sleeve dress. We have some pants, we have a blouse, and we have a skirt. We have more Very Easy Vogue 9444, which I believe this is just for the blouse. That would make sense. Uh, next, we have Vogue 8227. Sorry, where is the 7? 8220. Um, this is a. I think this is a series of Dickies and then also this dress, this overdress. Next, we have Vogue 8876, which I believe is this dress at different lengths and maybe the pants as well. Yes. So either a full length dress, short dress, blouse, or pants. Next we have Vogue 9020, which is this dress. Um, I like the collar on here. Also check out her Farrah Fawcett hair. Love that. Then we have a, another very easy Vogue in 8990, uh, which is this very 70s kind of cowl neck loose fitting dress. Another very easy Vogue 8480. Um, again, oh, look at this collar. This collar is great. I love it. Um, so either a long dress, a shorter dress, a blouse and pants. Next, we have another very easy Vogue 8994, um, which appears to be a blouse and skirt matching set. Yes. And then we have Very Easy Vogue 8827. Uh, again, this collar. Love this collar. Is that a date? That is not a date. It just says watch, shoulder, dart, and something. Work on location. Shoulder, work on... Here we go. Shoulder, work on location. Um, again, I, I really love having these kind of vintage... Um, patterns, especially ones that are used and have little notes from the previous owner because that helps me. That helps make my life a little bit easier. But anyway, this is a uh, dress with a very wide lapel collar. Um, yeah, there's that. So by now, hopefully you can see why I had such that huge gap in the, uh, the first true vintage uh, box because this is also full of 70s and 80s patterns. So we have Vogue. 7852, which is another very similar dress to the one we just looked at with another wide collar. You can tell 70s. The 70s loved these wide collars. Next, we have Very Easy Vogue 8791. This one was meant for knits, as you can see by it has this little thing on the front to help you test your stretch. Uh, this is a dress and jacket, I believe. Next, we have Very Easy Vogue 8763, which again is suitable for knits and it has uh, different lengths of dresses as well as pants. And I actually have two copies of this, not sure why. Are they in the same size? They're even in the same size. They're different printings. You can see that, but they're the same pattern. All right, next we have Very Easy Vogue 9928, which is a kind of a tunic and a skirt and pants, I believe. This is Joanne Fabrics number 32. I don't know where that is, but Joanne Fabrics 32, shout out. Um, again, this has a little stretch meter for the knits. Then we have Very Easy Vogue 8607. Again, very wide collar, I'm all about that. This is a dress with two different lengths. And we have Vogue 7743, a series of blouses. It's just the blouse. Yeah, it's just the blouse. Uh, then we have Very Easy Vogue 8397. Wider on hip, wider at hip. Whether this is wide at hip or make it wide at hip, I don't know. Either way, this is a uh, lovely little dress. Then we have Very Easy Vogue again at 9153. A dress with multiple sleeve options. I'm getting some Princess Di vibes. Uh, next, we have this Anna Adams pattern. This is a, um, I believe, like a tunic and pants. This does not match this, but um, this was a mail order pattern that I got from an antique store on its own. Uh, this was a mystery pattern that I intended to make a video about, but it is way too small for me, and it was even way too small for me when I was as skinny as I will ever be in my life. Um, so this is just kind of out there. Also, I don't I, I, something tells me that Mrs. Charles Atwood is not living in Palm Bay, Florida anymore, but yeah, that's a, 
anyway, that's what that is. Then we skip over into the 80s. This is Butterick uh, 5672. This is, I am all about this look right here. So this is um, a, this has a cami, a blouse, a skirt, and a short um, that you can pair together at different intervals for whatever you want. Next, we have a Simplicity 5664. This is a blader, blazer, ladies blazer. Then we have Quick Butterick 6074, which has this kind of jumper and then the blouse underneath. And then we're back to very easy Vogue 8952 for this, again, jumper set with a blouse and I believe the pants. Yes. Is this really a jumper set? It's not a jumper. My apologies. It's a uh, like a little vest and then a skirt. And then finally, we have Very Easy Vogue 8053 with this series of dresses. All right, so as of right now, these are all of my patterns. I do have a small collection of self-drafted ones, but most of those you have seen making of processes and things like that. Um, so again, here are all of my patterns. And if you are interested in seeing me work through any of these, go ahead and leave me a comment down below, either on this video or any of my other videos. And so yeah, if you're interested in seeing any of the makings of either on a full dedicated video or just some little behind the scenes stuff, go ahead and give me a follow over at Thread and Needlefish over on Instagram. Um, some things don't always make it to YouTube, but I'm usually, if I'm working on something, I'm usually posting updates over there. But yeah, thank you for watching. Go ahead, give me a, a nice thumbs up and maybe a comment down below. Uh, subscribe if you're interested in seeing potentially any of these come to life. And uh, yeah, thanks for uh, spending these past, I don't know, 15 minutes with me? Editing? Sam, fix that. Anyway, bye!